Through Fire and Water, The Life of Rabnussin of Breslov, Chapter 15. My fire will burn until Mashiach comes. During that summer, Rabbi Nachman became engaged to his second wife, and they were married in Elul. Shortly after the Rebbe became engaged, he contracted tuberculosis. As soon as he started coughing, he predicted that this sickness would take his life. His health deteriorated rapidly, and from this time on, he began to speak more and more about his death. He told his Hasidim that he wanted them to come to his gravesite to study, pray, and recite psalms to Hillam, and then he would work to heal their souls and benefit them eternally. I want to stay among you, he said. His Hasidim were deeply shaken by what they heard. How can you abandon us, they said. Who should we go to? What will come of all your efforts with us? It's been such a short time since we became attached to you. Will you leave us so soon? The Rebbe had already commented on how the spiritual arousal inspired by some of the outstanding tzaddikim of the past had lost its momentum with their deaths. But as for himself, he said, my fire will burn until the coming of Mashiach. It was in this period that the, that the Rebbe began explaining to his followers what they should do to ensure that his influence would remain alive. First and foremost, he instructed them to remain united and to love one another. He told them that they need to have no fears. They would be able to continue working on themselves and purifying themselves until they became the tzaddikim he wanted them to be. Even people who had not known him in his lifetime would become attached to them and become tzaddikim, and they in turn would make more followers. For I have accomplished, and I will accomplish, said Rabbi Nachman. Rab Nassim wrote... <clears throat> Rabbi Naftali wrote to Rabbi Nassin, informing him of the Rebbe's illness and all the things he was saying. Rabbi Nassin's reaction was, When I heard the news, I stood there trembling. I was devastated. With Rosh Hashanah, uh, Tav Kuf Samach v- Samaches approaching. Tav Kuf Samaches, 5568. Five, Reb Nussin's father-in-law was still away in Kremenitz. Reb Nussin began preparations to travel to Breslov to spend Rosh Hashanah with the Rebbe. Esther Shandel went through the motions of trying to stop him, but to no avail. Reb Nussin left for Nemerov, where he spent the Shabbos before Slichos with his sister. He also visited his father, who was beginning to relent, realizing that he would not be able to influence Reb Nussin and that everything he did was for the sake of heaven. Immediately after Shabbos, Reb Nussin left for Breslov, arriving in time for Slichos. He stayed in Breslov for Rosh Hashanah, October 3rd, 1807, remaining there until after Yom Kippur. Rabbi Nachman's Rosh Hashanah lesson that year, Lakuti Maran Torah Samach Aleph, 61, can with hindsight be seen as a kind of will and testament to his Hasidim and to later generations. He hinted at the catastrophe that was threatening the Jewish people as a result of the assault on Torah education and the massive waves of migration that were to come. The migrations were already foreshadowed by the forcible expulsion of the Jews from rural areas decreed by the Russian authorities for the following year. The Rebbe traced the roots of the deepening crisis to the ordainment of false leaders through the credence people placed in figures who are quite unworthy of the role. The main theme of his lesson was the need to strengthen one's faith in the Torah sages. This entails studying their works with a view to deriving practical lessons to apply in one's own life, taking care not to diverge right or left from their teachings. The implication was that even in the absence of a true leader, Pure faith in the, in the tzaddikim would enable one to find all the guidance one needs at the different junctures of life through one's study of the Torah. Addressing those who lack faith, the Rebbe said the remedy is machlokus. When a person finds himself faced with opposition, it is tantamount to his being confronted with searching questions, and these force him to look for answers, leading him to discover numerous holy books that he previously discounted as worthless because of inadequate faith. His search now brings him to appreciate their great value. The Rebbe said that this is the meaning of the Pasuk from 
Eov, and the man in conflict with me wrote a book. The Rebbe declared, there are many holy books at present, and there will be many more in the future, and they are all necessary for the world. Many of the Rebbe's allusions were not understood at the time he gave the lesson, but part of what he meant became clearer later that year when his teachings were brought to press for the first time and the Lakuti Maharan was printed. Clearly, the writing and printing of books was to play a vital role in the survival of Rabbi Nachman's influence. The Rebbe's Rosh Hashanah lesson thus contained a powerful message for Rabbi Nassim, who, as the Rebbe later said, had a great share in his Lakuti Maharan and who was to devote his whole life to publishing and spreading the Rebbe's teachings in the face of the most relentless opposition. The Rebbe taught that sometimes people's faith in the sages is quite flawless, yet they are still faced with opposition. The reason, he explained, is that they lack faith in themselves and in the value of their own original Torah ideas, and they relax their efforts. The opposition they face forces them to repent, giving them a new appreciation of the importance of their Torah ideas. Rabbi Nachman was hinting to Rabbi Nassim that the reason he suffered so much opposition, despite his firm faith in the sages, was because he did not have faith in himself, and he did not consider his Torah discourses worthy. The Rebbe's discussion about the leadership crisis centered on the concept of ordainment, smicha, literally laying on of hands which has its roots in the ordainment of Yehoshua by Moshe, as described in the Torah. And Yehoshua ben Nun was filled with the spirit of, Ch- of Chachma, for Moshe laid his hands upon him. Kisamach Moshe Yadavalav. From the very outset, the Rebbe had drawn the parallel between his relationship with Reb Nassan and that between Moshe and Yehoshua. And in his lesson now, in which he quoted the above verse, was seen as an implicit ordainment of Rav Nassim as the leader of the Breslov movement after his passing. In the lesson, the Rebbe made a connection between the ordainment of the disciple by the hand of the master and the idea of the hand that writes. The ordainment of Rav Nassim was his ordainment to write. Rav Nassim himself later said that after the Rebbe's passing, his whole vitality and inspiration came from the writing of his own original Torah discourses. He also said that he devoted much thought to how he could benefit the world and radiate some of the light he received from the Rebbe, and he came to the conclusion that the only way to do so would be through writing books, explaining the Rebbe's teachings, and spreading them as widely as possible. Reb Nachman of Cherin, one of Reb Nassim's leading students, wrote, And the truth is that all the power of Reb Nassim's pen, the hand that wrote, came from the spirit of wisdom which the Rebbe had radiated to him through the hand of ordainment that he laid upon him. One of the ideas in the Rebbe's lesson that Rosh Hashanah, excuse me, Reb Nachman of Turin continued to write, one of the ideas in the Rebbe's lesson that Rosh Hashanah is that there is an overall leader and individual leaders. Those of the Rebbe's followers who were older than Reb Nassim would find it difficult to place themselves under Reb Nassim's tutelage. They were worthy leaders in their own right, but nevertheless, they were individual leaders. It was Reb Nassim who merited the mantle of the overall leader, for it was he who brought forth his master's teachings in a way that made them available for all of Jewry. Unquestionably, Reb Nassim would also have felt uncomfortable had he been forced to accept the mantle of leadership over them too. But when it came to leading the new generation and directing them in their devotions, Reb Nassim had no equal.